hello and welcome to yet another video series this one is about the toolkit luminosity panel and this intro is going to be a little bit different from the other stuff i'm going to quickly show cool features <laughs> sort of like a sales pitch a little bit different than what i usually do but I decided that the first video should really showcase what this thing can do because otherwise I'm going to lose everyone. If I start to talk about color models or why this is better than this and this and this, uh, I'm going to lose everyone. No one's going to want to watch this video. So, uh, I promise I will explain why I did this panel uh what's the difference in the color models and all of that stuff in the coming videos so the people who are here for cool features you can stay because i'm going to show them now <laughs> um so what's particularly cool about this panel is that it has all these uh, ui elements that has direct access to um, let's just have a curve. Uh, so blend if, for those that don't know, is a way to limit a layer. And I can show it. If I turn on a help layer called color, I will see where I affect my with my blend if, and then I just drag the sliders here. This, of course, you can do if you double click here. And then you drag these around. So this was the beginning. Uh, but by default, uh, they both stick together. And you have to hold down Alt. And then maybe fade this. But then no, this whole window is also in the way. Uh, it's a hassle. And then every time I want to change it, I have to go back up here. So what I did is instead is just quick sliders like this you can just quickly set this and then quick access with buttons that are sort of zones that will set this if i click on lights it changes the sliders here and then you can further adjust it and tweak it um you have access to all of the channels and you have access to this layer as well but in most cases, you want it on the underlying layer because you're doing an adjustment that you want to limit instead of creating a mask because masks add a lot of file size. Uh, another cool feature is heat map. Now you can very easily see here and drag. You get the same colors over here. So we determined that we want to get rid of uh, the pinks and the purples, for example, and then we want to fade the blues a little bit here, like so. Uh, then everything that still has one of these overlay colors is selected with this layer. You can see this if I turn this on. Another cool, really quick access thing is if you do then an adjustment with this, uh, let's say we increase the red, uh, we make this really warm image, just as an example. Um, this switch here shows before and after applying the blend if. Also really nice. Uh, you can also customize all of this in the toolkit panel maker. You can create whatever values you want, uh, add or remove this completely if you want, and just have the sliders. You can copy a blend if from one layer to another. So if you have uh, something that you like, you can just copy and paste. Um, you can pick certain uh, values. This is more advanced features. I'll show it later. But um, I wanted to show you the cool stuff. Before we get into the boring educational 
where people fall asleep. Um, and another cool feature that I invented is a perfect way to create an identical uh, layer mask from a blend if. And why would you want that, you say? Well, let's just say you have a blend if that you think is good, but not quite good enough. So you want to tweak it a little bit more. What you can do then is convert it into a layer mask and then work on the layer mask. So for example, let's um, let's do it like this. You know now it, uh, where this is affecting. Now I'm going to create a layer mask out of this. And we have the same result as before. I should have made a comparison, so let's do that. Uh, let's see, where did I have the... My undo history is doing something weird. Uh, okay. Now we have, I think, the same blend if again. You can verify this by pressing load. Yeah. This button here will load the current layer. So let's do a merge here, just to have this to compare to, just so I can show you. That's actually good. And now I convert, I have to turn off the... Um, uh, and then I convert this into a layer mask on this curve. And now I apply the same color effect. And this effect uh, works both on mask and blend if. And I do another merge. This might be now going into advanced stuff a little bit, but I need to show that it's cool. <laughs> so this one here was the blend if. And this one is the mask. Oh, sorry. Well, should I have it the other way around if I want to show the mask? So this is the mask. There's literally no difference. So there, I've proven it. You can try it yourself. If you want to, if you don't trust me, but I think that is a very cool feature of this panel. Because I like Blendif, I try to use it as much as I can, but sometimes um you have to move further and then you have to start over and it's a pain in here you could either just do a lay mask but you could also use the other cool thing which are working masks uh, and i'll go into detail why these are so good uh later as well but the main thing is that it has a really cool ui where you can just drag things around so let's just uh, start with something here. So it's easy to start with something like a zone. Uh, yeah. And then I can just drag here in the sliders and it applies a quadratic curve here, which creates really smooth and nice masks. Even though there's a lot of layers here, um, you can do really like this is a hundred times better than using like just levels and stuff. Uh, it has dithering built in to the gradations that are harsh. You can turn it off if you want. Makes a little bit of difference, but um, yes, uh. You can also make this into a Gaussian. So this is quadratic, this is Gaussian. This is advanced now, but the thing is, the sliders are really easy, and creating masks is not a technical thing, it's a visual thing. So you just drag, and then you see what's happening. And then once you get the white that you want, 
then you know that's the mask that you want. And um, since I don't have, let's create a uh, new curves. So then I can convert this working mask. Let's say I'm happy with this. I'm not going to tweak it right now. There are some really cool advanced features to it. Um, but then I say I want this as a layer mask. And now I have it as a layer mask on this layer. We look here. Uh, and it has really nice gradients. And um, produces a really nice result. Um, it's so much better than just squishing it with levels and stuff like that. So, okay. Now, this first episode is over and it's gonna get... The next episode is gonna be boring probably because I'm gonna educate a little bit about luminosity and what luminosity is. Uh, so, if you don't wanna be educated, skip to episode number three. All right. See you soon.